Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. Welcome. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Melissa and I talk about missing kids cases in my channel. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe and also hit that bell to so be notified every time I upload a new video. Before I get started, I just came back from the corner store because I have been craving so many different type of sweets. Um, love lemon chips. The big bag of lemon chips. Got some M and M's. Got some La 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 Jolly Ranchers, and I got these: the corn nut chili pecan con limon chunky corn. Um, I've never had these. I had the other type kind, but I never had these. So yeah. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this new video that I will be talking about. Her name. Let me see how you say it because I don't want to say it wrong. Because she is a beetle. Is Nelaine K. Marshalls? Nelaine? Let me see how you say it. I may just say K. That's her middle name. Because I don't want to butcher her name. Nyleen. Okay. So Nyleen K. Marshall um, was for vanished in the Lorne Mountains in the Helen National Forest near her home in Clinton, Mount Montana. She was with her adoptive father, Kim, her mother, Nancy, and her two siblings, Nathan and Six, and Noreen, too. So it was a sunny and beautiful day on Saturday, June 25th of 1983. Kim Marshalls was a Capital City Radio Club member and the Marshalls were invited to attend a ham radio operator's picnic in the Alicorn Mountains. Nyleen was cashing frogs with other children along the Mount Mountain Creek. She was being watched by a 13-year-old girl who told Nyleen to stay in her one spot and then left. When the girl returned, Nyleen was gone. The area where she played was dense, forest surrounded by Deepy croc, rocky cliffs, and mine shafts. And I do not want to see nobody in my comments. I'm like, why did they let her with the 13-year-old? Why did the 13-year-old left her alone? I don't want to hear that. Do not, leave, don't even. Some children claim Nyleen had been taking, talking to an unfamiliar man in purple jogging suit, a six-year-old boy. So police that Nyleen said the man wants me to follow the shadow. Police said speculated that the man had lure her away by telling her to play the shadow game. An extensive search began with over 208,000 volunteers, helicopters, infirmary, heat sensors, canines, specialized search teams were brought into the search. My staff, ponds, dogs had her since near Mir Mannequin Creek and then it probably stopped only confirming that investigators that she had been kidnapped. About five days into the search, weather took a rush turn and investigators did not believe there would be a good ending. However, volunteers still showed up. After the 10th day, the search was cut off. But the disappearance of Nyleen touched lives forever. I just got kids of my own, said Ken Garden, a search volunteer with tears in his eyes. Nyleen's face was displaced on billboards, mail cartons, shopping bags. Tips from around the world were reported but no one penned out for investigators. In 1985, the marshals received a phone call made by a man police suspected abducted Nyleen. It would be the first of three calls they would receive. The men also communicate with law enforcement, the National Center for Missing and Exploring Children, and the Child Find of America. The man claimed he picked up a little girl named Kay. The letters contain information that was never made public. The writer claimed to have a good investment in income, and work from home, enabling him to homeschool Kate. He also claimed to travel frequently throughout the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. He wrote that he never knew her family missed her, but could not let her go. The letters were postmarked from Madison, Wisconsin. Around the same time, Child Find American in New York received a phone call claiming to be the writer of the letters. The calls were traced to several phone booths, including one near a pharmacy in Ginting, Wisconsin. 
The communications were de detailed and suggest that law enforcement that Nailene was the victim of sexual abuse. An aspect of the letters were shown during the 1990s airing on Self Mystery and read as follow. I picked Kay up in the road in the Alton Park area between Helen and Brawler. She was crying and frightened and I held her. She was shaking and I decided that I would keep her and love her. I took her home with me. I have a nice investment income. I can work from home so I care for her myself all the time. I teach her at home and she likes to go with me when I travel. Her hair is short, curly now and she really has grown. She's about 45 inches and around 50 pounds. She has a full four, she she has all four of her permanent upper and two of her lower incensor at this time. She takes a bath and brushes her teeth every day. She eats well, her favorite meal is pizza and cherry. She would gladly recount to your to your tips, trips to San Francisco, New York, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Nashville, Chicago, Puerto Rico, and Canada. We're even in a Great Britain for a month last year. And she loved it. No question passport. Nobody questioned passport. The letter went on to say, It is it is or where it comes from, only that I get from the bathroom every morning. It's actually a spoonful of steam. It doesn't affect her physically. I never molested her in any other way. She's a sweet little girl and it's because of her how much I have grown to love her. That I realize how much her family must miss her. See, but she has just adjusted and seemed happy. She trusts me and is afraid. Isn't it afraid? We play a lot and she laughs when we climb around. She smiles and acts cold when I tease her. I love her and I have her. I just can't let her go. There's so many sick people in the world. So many sick people and he is one of them. He is one of the most, whoever it is, a sick person who needs help. The FBI determined that all the letters from phone calls received came from the same man. In a final note, that anonymous man claimed that he had killed Nailene and placed her body in a mine shaft near her hel Helen. The mine shaft has since been sealed, but research with no result. At as late of 2018, postcards were received at a business in Hansville in DeFord in Oregon in Montana. The postcards were postmarked from Cincinnati, Ohio with no return address. There was a few other leads in the link case. Richard James Wilson was Helen's Montana resident with the history of mental illness in August of 1991. Wilson turned himself into the authorities claiming he had murdered Nightleen and another woman. The sheriff's office searched the area where Wilson claims to have buried Nightleen but found nothing. Investigator could not validate his story and dismiss him as being unstable resulting in a false confection. By 1994, the Marshals were living in, in Japan. They moved to Mexico in 1995 when Kim received a job transfer. The plan, the plan was for Kim to stay in Japan with the children while Nancy flew to Mexico to look for houses. While staying in at a hotel in Mexico, Nancy was sexually assaulted and strangled to death. Though the death was ruled a suicide by Mexico police, evidence found indicates she was murdered. So it's a picture. It was her mom, Nancy, and that really, really sucks. Nancy had met with friends at night before she, and was in a good mood. She ne The next day, she was found in her room at the Ritz Radisson Per Soul Hotel in Mexico City. She was hanging from a shower robe and with her hands tied behind her back. She was beaten and bruised, and her wedding ring, watch, and bottle of perfume were missing. Many other volleys were in her safe untouched hotel room door had been kicked in police never pursued the case and it was deemed dangerous for kim to continue his efforts investigating the death of his wife in another country she was buried in texas in 1997 a nurse at new orleans hospital claimed to have encountered narlene and her abductor the nurse said the 19 year old pregnant woman named helen came into the hospital with the man and wanted to be admitted to give birth the young woman told the nurse that she thought her mother's name was Nailene, telling then she grew up with a different country and didn't remember much of her childhood. The nurse knows she did not have an accent, however. When the nurse and staff tried to ask for information about her identity and medical information, the couple quickly left. 
The couple was tracked down the question by police. The young lady was asked to submit a DNA sample, but Nileen's mother had been murdered and no DNA was available. Police tracked down Nileen's birth father, who had never been involved in her life, and it was not a match. None of the reports exist on the sighting. When you enter the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, you are taken back in time when you see the flyer of Nileen in an office window. My God tells me she's deceased, Jefferson County Sheriff Greg Dolte told World Now in 2017. Sheriff Dolte said law enforcement had returned many times to the site when Eileen vanished, but nothing was found, and not one piece of her evidence was never recovered. The National Center for Missing and Children, Exploring Children, issue an age progressive to 43 years old and lists Nileen on their website. Decades later, authorities still receive calls with tips. She reminds a topic on crime, SLULU sites, chat forms, and website. For investigating, the case is still open. Sheriff Dolphy said the issue is something that they have yet to put away. Many pray Nileen is out there alive and well, and according to letters and phone calls, Nileen could still be alive. There will always be hope. No one should stop searching for her. She may be living in her life as Kay and not remembering her past, or that she was abducted. Some have dismissed the letters and phone calls from the potential suspects as cruel hoax, but what if they were not? Find Nileen Marshall's a Facebook group provides updates and other information about the case, although there doesn't appear to be any activity since 2018. On November 20, 21st of 1990, the series Unsolved Mystery aired an episode in its third season. Among the story was a segment about the disappearance of Nalene Marshalls. You can watch the full episode in the video below. And that is the story of beautiful Nalene. I fully agree with the detectives. I think she's still alive somewhere. Um, her doc, the person that wrote those letters, called everything, had to be the one that kidnapped her. It had to be. Like, there's no way because he knew too much. He knew where she got abducted from. He just, he knew too much. He knew too much. And he, and it just, it sucks. It sucks that her mom never got justed. Justed. Somebody killed her and her mom couldn't even get justice for her case. She died never knowing what her daughter went through or what happened to her daughter. But I still, I really do agree with them and I think they're a lot. She's alive somewhere. She may not know that she was abducted. She may not know, you know, she she may not remember her past life. She was so young. Um... And I just hope that one day we could get answers. I don't know if she still has family members. Like they said, her dad was never in her life. I don't know if her step-siblings are still alive. I don't know if her stepdad is still alive. I'm hoping there are family members that knew her that are still alive and hoping, searching, you know, try to get answers. And this is why I do these type of videos because... You never know. Some kids, you know, they're still missing, but they don't have family living, so there's nobody fighting for them. And that's what I want to do. I want to fight for these kids, and I want to fight to give these families answer and hopefully bring these beautiful angels that have been missing for so long, bring them home where they belong and bury them the proper way. Um, so if you know anything about an Aline case or anything that you heard or seen please go ahead and call the detectives give them answer no matter what how small it is if you don't no matter if you think that it's not it's not help it's not gonna help no, no. go ahead and tell them and they will figure it out after that um i'm just this case to me i think it was one of those cases that just by reading it over and just like just knowing that her mom some cruel, cruel person just decided that they had the right to kill this mom when this mom did not know, you know, you didn't know what this mom was going through. This mom had lost her child. You know, her child got abducted and, and she was fighting to try to get some answers and some 
animal decides that they want to take her life for what for nothing and now you can't and now her husband can't even get justice for her because it's in another country and you know with it being Mexico it could be dangerous because the people I'm assuming that the people that did do this to her were dangerous people it just, it just sucks it really really sucks and I hope that at least one day Nancy could also get some justice for her and whoever animal did that to her could get um, the punishment that they deserve I will see y'all so soon again with a new video don't forget to subscribe hit that bell and also if you have any kiss missing cases that you want me to speak about let them write them down on my description